The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. First week podcast. Public views September 19th, 2023. How you guys doing? Uh, normally today we will have the uh, we, we we have the student report with myself and Kyle Nash, but uh, he is under the weather. He's going to be taking uh, the week off from all media related activity, activities. Definitely not appearing on this show this week. So first off, we'll get well, uh, Kyle number one. He was, like, he was sick last week during the show. You probably Kyle's probably didn't notice that because you know he, he's he's that talented that he can play hurt and you only know it. But uh, he told me that uh, this weekend it, it kind of came to head. He, he's a busy guy. He's a, he's a journalist, so he's a busy guy. He works, you know, obviously does appearance on this podcast every week. He does a podcast appearance on the Hello Podcast that I appear on as well, too, every week as well. He does his own show on Wednesdays. He has other things he does, media. He covers the Jaguars, whole nine. So he's a busy guy. So I don't blame him for taking a week off. You know, and I, and I always tell folks, you know, sometimes you got you to know when to back off, know when to listen to your body, listen to yourself, listen to your mental health. If is telling you to take a break, take a, take a step back a little bit, just even, even for a few days, a few hours, whatever it may be, you do it. And um, um, I'm I'm a definitely an advocate for that, which is actually a very good segue because um, I tell this podcast why I left, and the reason I tell that that episode this episode why I left is I want to talk about a couple minutes here, I'll spend a couple minutes here rather explaining. Why I made the decision I made uh, a few weeks back. Um, if you guys don't know, as yet, um, I you know you guys knew you guys know I had a uh, other podcast called Take Three Wrestling Podcast. Um, it's, it's a wrestling show, um, which I've been a part of for a better part of the three and a half years. I was the host for, for a good while, um, and I recently left that uh, show. I left left the show uh, about less two weeks ago. And uh, if, if for, for a lot of reasons uh, why that happened, um, but uh, you know, I just want to elaborate on my my situation and why I decided to leave. Um, but you know, for, for starters, from a creative point of view, I'll say this: I, I felt like number one reason. First off, I let the show was go to schedule. Um. As you guys know, and I've, I've spoken on the show many times over, that we do that podcast every Thursday night. Um, the problem for that for me is the hour where we do the show. We do the show at 10, 30, 11 o'clock to start. We, we go pretty much two hours or close to two hours every episode, which puts, that, which puts the end of the show at 1 o'clock in the morning. So that's, so that's beyond. And on top of that, after I have to upload the show, you know, on the platforms, whether it be YouTube or on the uh, on my on the podcast feed and all that, so that's 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 an extra uh, 15, 20, 15 to thirty minutes, depending on how long that process goes through. So the schedule number one was the reason, the number one reason why I couldn't keep committing to the show, um, and I say that because I work. Friday morning from one. It's a long day for me Friday mornings. But also, I'm up early in the morning as well, too, with my kids to take them to school at 7 o'clock. And I'm someone who needs a lot of sleep. And you guys know, um, not a lot. when I said a lot of sleep, I mean, I need, I need at least 6-8 hours of sleep. Um, especially now with the health issues that I've now, I'm trying to curb now. I've been trying to curb for the last, uh, you know, 6 months now. You know, as I, t- I told you guys back in March, you know, I am a diabetic. And part one of the things the doctor said that you need to start getting sleep. And yeah, people say, "Oh, this is one day, no big deal." Yeah, but that one day impacts two or three days after that. When I don't get sleep on one day, it impacts the rest of my day on Friday into Saturday, sometimes into Sunday. So that's the main reason I left this show on my end. Um, we also. There was some creative things too, also on on my end. I, I just think, really, at the end of the day, um, and I'll you know I'll even confess this now. I I felt like I outgrown the show. I felt like 
um, after a few years, I just didn't feel like I fit much longer. I you want to call that. I felt like I, I didn't fit, and, I, and that's a me problem. That's not that's to do with those those guys at all. Those guys are, are, are terrific guys, and you know, obviously, you know, we do, do what you do, and you figure it out for me for yourself. Um, confession time. I actually had had the uh, thought of of actually leaving the show a year ago, uh, last summer or last last uh, fall. Um, we started the show in 2019 uh, with myself and my friends Mike, Mikey B, and his best friend Joe. And we had started the show, and we had, we had a good time with it. Obviously, and we 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 launched that thing, and it was it was great. It was fun. Um, and then our our good friend of the podcast here, Big Jim, who's also the host of Three CT, host of Hold Up Podcast, host of Discussion with Nobody, he would start guesting on the show, um, guest you know doing guest spots on the show with us every so often, and then it got to the point where he became a member of the show, um, and I, actually when I was about to leave last year, I thought about thought about leaving last year, um, I thought by Jim coming on the show maybe that would revigorate my passion for the show, wanting to do the show more show every week and this and that. And it did for a little while, because we were we were foursome, and it felt like okay, well, it put a little jolt in the show, jolt in the, jolt in the podcast, and uh, obviously we we can work it up from there. But as time went on, like I said, it's it's one of those things where you don't fit in, you don't fit in, and, it, and, it, and you don't feel comfortable. And the schedule on top of that too makes it makes it harder. The the reality is, I I, I lost the passion for the podcast, and I really lost the that passion for the podcast a long time ago. And and, and honestly, I, I I'll say it again, I would have left a year ago was for Jim coming on board. And, re- and there's three reasons why I didn't, I didn't uh, leave at the time. Number one, Jim came on board, which is fun. Number two, also t- as well, I didn't want to leave those two guys, uh, Mike and Joe, um, by themselves. So I, I, I sacrificed my own, my own mental health to make to make a uh, to to uh, um, you know to make those guys feel like okay, like, let's just make this happen. This is let's co- continue this. You know, I you know at my own risk, my own mental health, you know, did that. Um. Now people are ask, well, what 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 made you all of a sudden trigger you leaving two weeks ago? What was the boiling point? You want to call that? Well, I'll, I'll little lay back in the weeds here. Um, first off, they they really start, they've done the first show without me since uh, officially last week, which is great. Um, thank you for the setup, guys. I appreciate that little, the, the kind words on this one podcast uh, last week. Uh, and, and I and I want to out of respect also to to let them put out their statement first. Let them. Speak their, their their thoughts on my departure and all that, and I'm, I'm glad I did that. Before I, before I put my thing out there, um, the the boiling point for me was the last show, uh, two Thursdays ago. Um, we were talking about having a topic to Mikey and I, um, about intercontinental champions and rankings and stuff. And I had mentioned on, on, on this show, myself and Duke, Duke Bennett on the podcast a few weeks back, we did our own rankings and stuff because it was, it was involving Gunther and his title reign and he just passed Honky Top Man's title reign uh, of the longest reigning IC champion all time. And the topic got really heated at the end uh, between Mike and I. And sure, it's where both guys are passionate about things and about topics and we, we're going to go... We're gonna say say we're gonna say and that's it. But there was it was different. There was something different about that that uh, exchange, and um, you can see it on the uh, on the episode too. You know, I got loud with him. He got loud with me, and this and that. He was unhappy with that. I was happy as well as well too. And the the tenor of the show ch- that episode changed. The show changed. Big Jim, you know, Joe. They got quiet. It was just Mike and I going at it. And Mike and I have been friends for te- about ten years. He, I mean, he's regular on this podcast, in fact. So, um, but we've had him and I've had some. I won't say personal issues, but there's been some like things I think we have not discussed, which we hashed out after the fact. So things things are good between me and him. Just, 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 just to be clear, there things are good to me and him. So we hashed things out ever since. But there were some underlying things I think we had to talk about. But at the moment, in that moment, I was done. In that moment, I was like, "No, we're we're we're, we're, we're I'm, I'm 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 leaving this," because uh, obviously the, the incident happened, and then of course Big Jim sends me it sends the text saying that he was didn't like what happened, and if he's if he's gonna he's gonna continue to meet him, then you know obviously we may, we, he may go part time, and then Mike comes back and he let, let, lays out a uh, 
a text to us and his feelings and situation. And then um, I decided that no, I, I'm I'm done. I'm 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 gonna be out. Um, in fact, I'm I made a decision that night when I logged off that I am officially done. Like right now, my wife, who 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 is the person I consult the most when it comes to things like this, especially, you know, she's my best friend, she's my soulmate, you know. So everything I want, I do, I I I, I rely on her and for for counsel and whatnot. And she told me to take a step back. You know, first off, take a few weeks off. You know, take a few weeks off before you decide to do it. Um, do anything. You know, take a leave, or sleep on it. And I told her, no, I'm, I was, uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I just, uh, I don't feel it. Um, my mental health is now, you know, not fe- not in the same place where it should be, and I got to sit to myself. But I slept on it anyway on, on her advice, and Friday morning I felt even more. Um, uh, encouraged to make the decision to walk away, which I ended up doing that day. I sent a text saying, um, "Guys, you know, listen, I'm. Uh, I, I think after, after after all this time, I think we, I think I'm going to part ways in the show. I support you guys still. You guys do what you got to do. Well, I'll you know do what you got to do to transfer over to RSS our feed and all that stuff and make transitions smooth as hell, which we did, of course. Um, uh, both guys, um, well, really, both guys, meaning Jim and Mike, actually uh, had asked me to, you know, reconsider if we want to, or you know, make the doors always open to come back. Um, honestly, um, I, I, I'll, I'll definitely consider, you know, if, if that's still a case down the road. But right now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy where things are right now in, in terms of where what I'm doing, um, and also where they're going, and. I'm still very supportive of those guys. I'm still, you know, listening to those shows every week. I'm still, I'm still making sure they're doing their thing and all that. And you know, we and again, those guys still come on this podcast regularly. So it's not like this. This, this, this is not a bad breakup at all for me. Um, this is just a situation where I had to listen to my body, listen to my mind, and make a decision that was best for me and my mental health and my situation. I was not happy doing the podcast. I had had not been happy doing the podcast for, for about almost almost about a year. Um, I'm just being honest, and that, that, that and that's my bag. That's that's more my fault. Um, but also, you know, the schedule and everything. Like I said, it, it, all those things I, I mentioned, it, it it played a part in that. And um, you know, I, I want to thank those guys for for a wonderful three years. You know, I had a great, you know, mostly mostly great three years with you know, on, on that show. But at the same time, you know, sometimes things th- things go elsewhere. You know, elsewhere and. You you got to make choices that's best for you first. So to Jim, to Mike, to Joe, thank you for one for three years. Um, obviously I will keep up mind in the future about coming back if if that ever plays out. Um, r- real talk though, do I see myself going to that, to that podcast? Probably not. And I think a lot of the reason is because the fact that um, I got enough of my plate now as as is now with this medium. Okay, on other projects and stuff as is, and I'm I'm already trying to balance things and balance the stuff I do on top of home life, on top of work, on top of other things in that nature. So if there was something within this medium that was going to be lopped off, that was always going to be the show that I would lop off. Um, and. I'll be honest. I, I'm I'm happy right now. I'm I, I've, I'm I'm in a better place now mentally. Um, they can now flourish the show. I mean, they're gonna be they're gonna do, they're gonna do, they're gonna do great things, obviously, because both, all three of those guys are very talented, and you know what they do, and um, you know, and I'm 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 the biggest fan. I'm, I'm gonna support them always. Um, but I had to do this for me, first and foremost, for me. So, again, that's why I made the decision to leave the show after three years, and um. You know, there's no more, no more to say about that. So support those guys, please, also, y- y- even though I'm not there anymore. Continue to support those guys. Take the wrestling podcast. If you love, if you love pro wrestling. And um, that's that. So now that's out of the way. That's about f- close to 15 minutes to uh, talk about. Um, let's go through week two in the NFL. As I said, normally uh, our boy Kyle's here for the show, but he is not here doing to being ill, which is fine. So what I'm going to do here is just recap week two in a nutshell. Um, and I, I'll start first with my team to get things started as a Giants fan. Um, terrible first half. 
Um, come back. They win 31-20 against Arizona after a terrible first half. John, Daniel Jones turned it up in the second half. Um, obviously, second bar getting hurt. Not good, but it's not as bad as he's going to be two, three weeks with an ankle injury. Um, a must win for the Giants because no way in hell they're winning, they're winning on Thursday in San Francisco, so they need to win this game. So the fact they won this game in Arizona, um, being down 20-plus, um, it's a huge win for the team. It really is. Um, so, look, hey, you, you take the win when you can. Um, was, it, was, it wasn't pretty, but good to see, see a, an efficient second half by Daniel Jones and company. Um, so Arizona's old two now. Um, obviously, they're going to be one of the worst team in football. Uh, but, they, but, but they've been competitive, though, uh, so far off the gate. Both games, they've uh, lost by a, a, co- a combined, what, nine points to, to Washington and New York. I mean, they're not, they're not, they, they're not playing the worst team in football, I'll tell you that right now. All right, back to Thursday's game of Eagles 2-0, beat the Vikings 34-28. Eagles look kind of shaky, but I tell you what, I'd rather be the Eagles at 2-0 trying to figure things out than me 0-2, just to say that. Uh, Minnesota 0-2, and it's, what's weird about Minnesota being 0-2 is that Kirk Cousins is playing fantastic football. He's still playing really good football. It's not his fault they're losing these games. You know, the same with that. Um, the Falcons now 2-0. They beat the Packers 25-24. Uh, Falcons, like I said, Feels, I, I mean, I don't want to say it's fraudulent, but they, 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 they're a frisky team. They, they were frisky last year. They're going to be frisky this year. So probably still two as well. A wide open NFC outside the top three teams in the NF, in, in the conference. You know, of course, Dallas, San Francisco, and uh, and Philadelphia. Um, maybe you can steal wild card. We'll see. Um, Green Bay. I mean, Jordan Love. Solid. I mean, one thing I will say in those first two weeks that Jordan Love has not fallen off the cliff. He's he's looked very solid these first two weeks. Um, but, that, but that's a game most Green Bay should have won. They had to control that game most of the way. Until the late in the fourth quarter, so there's that. Uh, Buffalo's back on track with a 38-10 win over the Vegas Raiders. Uh, Josh Allen had a huge game. Um, Bills, like I said, should be fine moving forward. Want to see a larger sample of this team moving forward? How they how they look? Um, but they need they, this is a huge win for them. They need this win to get back on track after the uh, heartbreaker against the Jets last week. Uh, the Bengals are now 0-2 as they lose to the Ravens, 27-24. Uh, Lamar Jackson again, like Philadelphia. I rather be the Ravens at two and zero, trying to figure things out. Because look, the offense is, is a new offense, and they're still trying to figure things out with Lamar Jackson. But they're two and zero. Lamar had a really, really good game, very efficient. Bengals zero and two, concern, yeah, a little bit. But I do think they'll t- turn things around. That they, they look better in the second half as well too. Almost pulled the game back, pulled off the game, or the, or the comeback rather. But some concern, concerns there. Also, Joe Burrow getting hurt. That's going to be a problem. We'll see how that goes in, the, in days to come. Um. Seattle 37, Detroit 31 in overtime, uh, a game that Detroit, I thought, needed that game, honestly, to kind of, you know, lay a stamp of that they, will, they this team is, is here to make a make a statement, you know, to be the favorites in the, in the NFC North. Uh, Seattle is a huge win, though, because, you know, after getting blown out by the Rams at home, um, that's a huge win for them. Um, and another high-scoring affair by these two teams, like last year. Uh, the uh, Chargers now 0-2 as they lose to the Titans 27-24. Um, Brandon Staley hot seat, yeah, probably right. Um, Tennessee big win for them now. Now, uh, now one and one. Uh, the Buccaneers now two and zero. They beat the Bears twenty seven seventeen. How about Baker Mayfield though? Baker Mayfield has been very efficient, been very good the first two weeks of the year. Um, will he sustain this? I don't know. Chicago feels like a, like the biggest disappointment of the year right now. Um, zero and two, but there's more expectation this team to be in in, in the conversation. They lost to two teams that they probably could have beaten, you know, but, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles, right? Uh, Kansas City Chiefs beat the Jaguars, Jacksonville Jaguars, 17-9. Chiefs offense not looking all that great, but they find a way to win. They get, they get Travis Kelsey back. They get Chris Jones back. Um, it's the Chiefs. They'll figure things out, of course. Um, the Jaguars, um, they need, I mean, I, I thought this was a game they could have they could have won. They had multiple chances to put this game away early, and they didn't do that. Um, but that's just that. Um, the Colts beat the Texans thirty one twenty. Um, that's a that's a nice win for the Colts. Uh, even though losing the quarterback Anthony Richardson in the first half due to a concussion, Houston um, looked decent in the, de- decent in the first half, and then they just you know, they pull it together. Uh, the Niners now go to a no. They beat the Rams thirty twenty three. Um, Niners to me are right now the best team in football through these two weeks. Uh, the Rams despite the loss, Stafford looks really really good. Memphis looks really good. He had two picks in that game, though, but he looks really, really good overall, healthy. Um, the Rams, the Rams might be in this conversation for wild card um, this year. 
in the NFC. Um, let's see. The Dallas Cowboys, they, they're now 2-0. They beat the Jets 30-10. to Best defense in football for the Cowboys. Um, Dak Prescott looked decent in that game as well, too. Uh, Zach, Zach Wilson in the Jets, uh, I don't know, man. That's um, Look, he's he, you got to keep him in there. You got to keep him in a couple of weeks. But if I'm the Jets, I'm definitely looking for options outside of the uh, of the team for court, at quarterback. Maybe Carson Wentz. I don't know, um, but you got to ride this thing out. Otherwise, this he he'll be the reason why the Jets will probably fall apart this year. Because the Jets defense is really good. The Jets defense is really good, and they keep them in games. But if Zach Wilson can't be can't can't be even average enough to win, keep, keep his team a chance to win, give his chance to team give his chance chance to win games. Rather, um, they're not going to go anywhere. That simple. Uh, how about this wild game here? The Washington Commanders now 2-0. They beat the, the Denver Broncos 25-33 um, in a game that they were down 21-3 at halftime, came back, took a 35-24 lead, almost blew the game in, in, in uh, regulation, but uh, Commanders are now 2-0 now. Broncos 0-2. Um, Sean, the Sean Payton experience so far, not so good. Uh, Russell Wilson, you know, people give him a lot of blame for the slow start, but I thought he's, I thought he's looked okay. Then again, okay is not good enough for Denver when you're paying that guy that money he's getting paid right now on his contract. So he needs to be special. How about the two and no Dolphins? They beat the, the Patriots twenty four seventeen. That offense is fantastic. Uh, I'll tell you what though, with the with the, with the Patriots though, zero two. But man, they they've they've been competitive. You know, against the Eagles and Dolphins. Uh, I, I I think I thought I think Mac Jones has been pretty solid for this team actually the first two weeks of the year. Honestly, um, the Saints on Monday football. Saints beat the Carolina Panthers twenty to seventeen. Uh, Saints two and zero as well now. Um, like I said, it's it's a NFC South game. I mean. The Saints aren't any world beaters, but they're going to win some games because that division. Um, not surprised there. Carolina, of course, rookie quarterback Bryce Young. Long way to go. Uh, and then finally, uh, 26-22, Steelers over the Browns for the first win of the year. Um, Nick Chubb injury. Ooh, disgusting. Injury, knee injury out for the year. Um, Steelers win a big one. They needed that game. Um, in a game that was pretty ugly. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I fell asleep in the third quarter, early fourth quarter. I was exhausted last night. Couldn't stay up. So, uh, yeah, but uh, that's that's the week two recap here in the NFL. Now, for college football, and the top 25 has been updated for this week. And I'll tell you what, for, for a week that was not looked at as a consequential, consequential week or a, a week that we were looking forward to college football, it was actually pretty interesting this year, this week. Lots of teams that, top teams almost got upset, like my Knowles, four Seminoles almost got, almost got upset, Georgia almost got upset this week. Um, despite that, Georgia still won, Michigan two, that stays the same. Texas and Florida State swap spots in now uh, Texas down three, Florida State's four. Um, that's not a surprise there, honestly. Uh let me see. Uh five USC, not a surprise there. Ohio State six, uh Penn State seven, Ohio uh Washington's eight, Notre Dame's nine, Oregon moves up three spots at number ten. Um Eleven's Utah moves up one spot. LSU now moves up two spots to twelve. How about Alabama now? Despite beating South Florida now, down three spots to thirteen. This is the lowest. This is the lowest I see Alabama this early in the year, probably since mid two thousands. I'm not, I'm not even joking about that. Um, Oregon State moves up two spots to fourteen in the uh, in the polls. Uh, Ole Miss up two spots to fifteen. Oklahoma State up no sorry Oklahoma rather. Up three spots to sixteen. You got North Carolina up three spots to seventeen. By the way, North Carolina very very kind of a frisky uh, ACC team there. Another one, frisky ACC team here. Uh, Duke up three spots to eighteen. Colorado, despite the big win um, in a crazy crazy game on on Saturday night, down one spot to nineteen. Um, Miami uh, UM up two spots to twenty. You got Washington State up two spots to twenty one. UCLA up two spots to twenty two. Tennessee down twelve spots in that loss to uh to uh Florida I'm um, in the swamp uh, at twenty three. Iowa once one spot up at twenty four and the Florida Gators now officially in the top twenty five for the first time all year long. Um so again that's your updated AP poll. Um it's been a very, very um fun year so far in college football. Um of course obviously this week is gonna be a this week's gonna be a, a a crazy week of college football. Um, we got lots of big games this weekend. For example, as I bring up the uh, the uh, just the, just the big ones. For example, um, on the schedule, give me one quick second here. So, for example, you're gonna you're gonna have Florida State, Clemson. Although Clemson, not, although Clemson is unranked right now currently, you got Oregon, Colorado. You got Mississippi and Alabama, Utah and UCLA, Oregon State and Washington State, um, Penn State, Iowa. Of course, the big one, Ohio State and Notre Dame. 
Um, so there's a lot of really a lot of big games in this weekend there. So a lot of so I expect a lot of shakeup, even more shakeup next week in the polls. And of course, when if, when Kyle's back, we'll discuss that on the podcast. Um, but yeah, it's been a, this week was actually very surprisingly very very uh, um, interesting and compelling, despite the quote unquote week schedule um, this week. Anyway, let's go. Uh, let's talk about Stephen A. Smith real quick. Um, Stephen A. Smith was actually on the Joe Budden podcast. Um, this uh, last week, and he weighed in. Joe Biden had asked uh, Stephen A. about his thoughts on uh, working Mass Kellerman and whatnot. At first, take a couple years back, um, and Stephen A. weighed in um, as Stephen A. All Stephen A. does. Here he said, "He say, I didn't like working with him, man. It's just that damn simple. I didn't like it. I thought the show was stale." Um, I thought that we had flatlined when it came to the public at large, and I'm trying to win. I mean, I didn't want to go from number one to number two when Skip left. I, that's not what I wasn't having that. That shit was not going to happen. Did anything in the numbers say that that you might have been headed that way? No, but to me it did. Creatively, it, to me it did. Not just creatively, but the consistency of the number. Got it. In other words, it wasn't going this way. Yeah, it was just there. It was there. Like and, and, and and not only that, it's like it's like us being in this room right now. Come on, y'all, y'all know the difference between something that's stale and something you pumped up for. for you sure. just know, absolutely. And so and so that's what I was feeling. And it was like, you know, listen, I had mad respect from him from the standpoint that white dude, highly intelligent, Ivy League educated from Columbia, smart as a whip, can talk his ass off, can talk about anything. And I get all of that. But you weren't an athlete and you weren't a journalist. And the the absence of the two components left people wondering, why should we listen to you? Okay, well, you might have had that figured out on Sports Nation or you might have had that figured out on another show. But on this show, if you looked at the content emanating in the social stratosphere, meaning YouTube and other components that you use to measure one's cachet, uh, uh, Q ratings, focus groups, all of these different things. It was like I was damn near doing the show by myself because we were oceans apart in terms of cachet. Well, how are you oceans apart from me if you sit right across from me five days a week for the whole two hours? Because one of us is resonating and one of us is not in that platform. And I was like, look, this is what it is. And we had a number of conversations, one-on-one, -on -one, many, many times. I know this audience. I know what they're looking for. I know what they need, et cetera, et cetera. At some point, you're going to do what you need to do or you don't. And if you don't. All right, that's, that's, a, that's a long one here. But I want to get the full context because I know people take, take a lot of snippets from this, from this interview from Joe Budden and Stephen A. Smith and to, try to make their own assumptions. Look, what Stephen A. Smith said and has been saying for, for the last couple of years since the, the, the split up to him and Max Kelman, um, Max, that happened in 2021, right? 2021, I believe that's what happened, the, the, the breakup. And I gotta be honest with you, and, I, and this, is, this is not the first time, or the first time we're talking about this on the podcast here, because I remember last year, around this time, in, in fact, we discussed this a, a year later. Steve A. Smith, is, this is nothing new with Steve A. He's been saying this, the same, this, the same stuff here for the last two years when asked about it. One of the things I respect about Stephen A. Smith is that he he calls he calls himself to the carpet. He calls tells like it is. It doesn't bullshit you. He said it doesn't it didn't work. The, 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 it was I, it was like um, oil and water between him and him and him and, and Max in terms of how they had a structure. Um, and here's what I will say. When Skip left the show, Skip Bale left the show to go to Fox Sports. And they brought in Max. I was excited about it because Max. First of all, I'm, I'm a massive Max Kellerman fan. I think I've been following Max for for decades. You know his his box analysis is fantastic. Um, this is way of how he how he views life. Fantastic. His, his views on things. Um, the way he breaks things down is very detailed. So initially, when Max came on the show, I was excited because I thought, okay, well, finally get some real authentic discussions between the two guys. But what I what, you, what I realized as the time went on between the two, that the show could get in the mud a little bit, and, and Stephen A. was correct about that. And this is not about Max not being good enough to do that show. 
it's a fact that, and Stephen A, I, I agree with him on this one. Um, Max doesn't fit that show. Max is probably too smart for that show, honestly. We keep, we keep, it, keep it 100. Like, Max is more of a guy that should be on a podcast that likes to give out detailed, you know, thoughts on stuff that needs a space to do that. First take, in my opinion, is not really allow for that. Or, for that matter, the audience doesn't really care for that because it's a very fast-moving show. It's a very, I dare say, clickbaity show in a sense. In a sense. Um... And the vision that Stephen A. had post Max Kellerman has been realized now. And I gotta be honest with you. And this is not even a knock on Max at all, because I love Max. But first take is much more watchable today than it has been in a very long time. Because of the format they use. They bring in different personalities through there every certain days, through football season, through basketball season. You know, you have now you have Shannon Sharp Monday and Tuesdays, you got Mad Dog Russo on Wednesdays, you got um, Dan Olaski on, I think, Fridays or Thursdays, one of those days. Um, you know, and then during the NBA season, you have J.J. Redick on there and Kendrick Perkins. and But it's a good mix of people that fit that format. It's not a knock on Max at all. Max is fantastic what he does. It's just the reality of that show fitting certain people, and it didn't, it didn't fit Max. And I respect Stephen A. for being honest about that. I, I, I respect Stephen A. Smith for this Call like it is. People say, oh, he's an asshole. Same what he said. Well, you want, want me to lie to you? Want me to this bullshit you say? No, nah, it's cool. It's just, you know, whatever. No, you sound like it is. Steve Mason, of course, is very aggressive. That's how he is. He's, a, he's authentic to a fault. He's transparent to a fault. I'm not trying to defend Steve here. I, I, just, I, I just like the fact he's consistent with this. You know, and to be honest with you, he was correct all along. What what he envisioned for first take beyond Max after Max was uh, let go has been realized, and the show's been great. And he's right. The show when Max was on there, it would get into the mud a little bit. Uh, and the reason why I I, I I agree with him is because I saw it for myself watching the show. Again, not again nothing against, nothing against Max. It's just the fact that that show being at ten o'clock in the morning, people want to hear. Your thoughts and keep moving. Max is one of those people that likes to sit and detail every little thing, which is a great thing, but it depends on the format. So that's why um, I agree with Stephen A. with that whole situation in terms of the, the format of the show. I'm really curious. I, what, what I will say, too, is that Stephen A. has been, has been the, of, the only, of the two parties, Stephen A. has been the only one who's been very upfront about or, or has commented on the situation. I haven't heard... Max come and say one thing about the situation since in, in two years been gone, not one thing. Um, and I, I I I am I am curious just to hear Max's thoughts on on all this. You know, two years later, I am curious. I mean, he's not an ESPN anymore, ESPN anymore either, so he's not he's not weighed down by that. He can actually weigh in on, at some point now on his own. Looking forward to see where he ends up to, especially because he, he was part of the layoffs that happened a, a month ago at ESPN, or two months ago rather. So. Um, one last thing, if we get to this week's QOTWs. Um, I, um, this past Saturday, saw Ben Simple for the third time live. This was easily the best show that I've seen of those three, of, of those three shows. Um, I saw him first in 2006 at Global Gathering at a festival in Miami. Um, they were, I thought they were great there. Then I saw them in 2017, open for Metallica, um, which I thought was terrible because, um, honestly, they, they were having sound issues their, their entire set, so I, was, I wasn't able to enjoy it. Um, this show, though, however, was great. And the reason I wanted to go specifically want to go to this this concert was because their new album just came out recently, about two months ago, three months ago, maybe. Their new album is really, really strange. It's very different. It's very, it's, it's almost like a concept record. It's, it's very, it's it's very spaced out. It's um, what I would say, their new album is um, it sounds like it could be like a a, a musical in a sense, like a musical theatrical almost like theater like it's a lot of cool little things in there that is not typical of events and what they've done in the past so it's, a, it's an album that people may not like because it's not your typical you know grindstone metal bah, you know that kind of thing it, it there's a lot of elements in there there's classical elements in there acoustic guitar um lots of you know, piano you, you name it there's a lot of things in that album that's a, a complete departure from what they normally do 
So the one reason why I wanted to see the show live because I was curious to hear these new songs because I actually like the new record. I, I, the more I listen to the new album in the last couple months, I, the more I, I more like it. But I was curious how these new songs sounded live, if they interpret well live. Boy, was I was I uh, it was a surprise that they 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 interpret live probably even better than I thought it it would have. That that show on Saturday was fantastic. Um, it was great too because I got tickets for uh, eleven dollars. Um, how I got that? I, I didn't get tickets until like literally the like half an hour before the show. Um, I went to Vivid Seats and I saw they were making, they were had deals on the lawn uh, for eleven dollars. Um, so typical prices were like thirty five dollars on the lawn. So I ended up getting eleven dollars for eleven dollars. Myself, my buddy. Um, we uh, went to dinner with a bunch of friends. Went to the show at Texas Roadhouse. Had a good time there. Went to the show. Um, started to uh. My buddy of mine, one of the friends of our group, he had got seats. He had bought seats for the show. So what he did is he sent us the bar, the bar club his seats and you know emailed or texted to, to to me, and I was going to use that to get to the seat area. But I, I was which I really didn't need because honestly, security was so lax that night that I was able to get the seats without, without a problem. Then one of my really good buddies, uh, shout out to Jason, of course, um, he has passes for. The, the fairgrounds for the, the amphitheater all year long. He goes to all the, like all the shows there mostly um, throughout the year, and he's friends with all the security guards and people there at, on on the ground. So he got me to the front row right at the right at the stage um, to watch the band for the first like half of the set, um, and it was great. Um, I posted some pictures on my on my Instagram and my my Facebook my Facebook um, videos from that. I mean, it was, it was a great night. Had a great time. Um, the only thing is that my back went out after like eight songs, standing on in the pit, standing in the in, on the in the, uh, in, the uh, in that area. Had to go, had to go back to the seats and sit down and, and rest. There's that, actually a picture of me on my phone, and I'm telling my folks I, I'm, I'm having a good time. It's just that my 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 back went out, so I need I need to re- to relax. Getting too old for this shit, man. But that's that's now four concerts I've done. To, I've done. I've not, I've now done in two months. I saw Fall Out Boy. I saw Mudvayne, Disturbed, and now Vince Simple. So. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of like reliving my my twenties again, <laughs> in my like mid forties. So right, so all right. Before we get going, um, a few weeks ago we did a uh, I did a questionnaire on the Earth Speaking you know community page. Um, basically, it is this year is the anniversary of the of hip hop. So I basically asked folks on on the page, um, what uh. Um, give me give me your three your top three hip hop artists of all time, and as well as your top three albums of all time. So I run through some of these these um responses first before I go, get to mine, um real quick. So Charlie Thrower says his top three artists are Tribe Quest, Tupac, and Public Enemy. His uh three favorite records of all time are are uh Low End, Low End Theory, uh The Chronic, and Thirsty Chambers. Of course, that's Wu Tang, that's um Dr. Dre, and that's also um Tribe Quest. Um, Courtney Harden says three favorite artists: Jay Z, Wu Tang, and KRS One. Favorite albums is Jay Z's Reasonable Doubt, Nas Illmatic, and another Thirsty Chambers by Wu Tang. Uh, Mario Henry says his three his top three artists are Tupac, DMX, and Scarface. His three three favorite albums are All Eyes on Me by Tupac, Ready to Die by um, by Biggie Smalls, and uh, The Chronic by uh, Dr. Dre. My boy Dan Vesna says his three favorite artists are Nas. Royce Five by Nine and uh, Slain, and his three favorite albums are Gangstar, Hard to Earn, Nas, Illmatic, and then Big L's Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous. Um, let me see if we got any more here. Our own here, Rob Barnett, says his artists. Um, he has LL Cool J, Jay Z, and Ice Cube. Um, my friend Joe, of course, part of the Take the Rest Box, as I mentioned. Um, his three is uh, Lil Wayne, ODB, and Jay Z. Um, his albums are The Carter Four by Lil Wayne, Enter the Wu Tang, of course by Wu Tang, and Marshmallow's LP. He has, by the way, he gets runner ups to uh, The Blueprint and My Beautiful Dark, Twisted Dark Fantasy by Kanye West. The Blueprint, Blueprint of course, being um, uh, Jay Z. Um, one more here. Um, my friend uh, Anaya, she goes, Most Deaf, um, The Roots, and. No, no, no. She has the most deaf, black on both sides, the roots, things, things fall apart, and low end theory. Um, and then her three artists are Andre 3000, K- 
Common, and Black Thought. So thank you guys for that. As for me, my three favorite hip-hop artists of all time, um, Busta Rhyme is my favorite of all time. Number one. You guys know Busta, I'm, a, I'm a massive Busta Rhymes fan. Um, <laughs> I missed him in concert this past, last, last month, although he was the headliner. If I'd known he was, he was going to be in that show, I would have went to that show to see him. Um, Biggie Smalls is the number two for me. And then LL Cool J uh, for me at, at three. Um, in terms of my three favorite albums, this is this is a lot tougher. I'll, I'll, these are three I'll go for now, but it's gonna interchange anytime. I went Busta Rhymes extension level event as as the, uh, his um, one album. Um, how, uh, shout out to my boy Special Ed. What a, a legacy play here. Um, the legal album, actually the first album I actually owned. Special Ed legal, um, ph- phenomenal album to this day. Um, and then Biggie's uh, Life After Death. Um, is in my uh, top three favorite albums. Of course, like I said, this is go interchangeable. I could have gone LL Cool J, Mr. Smith. I could have gone Eminem's uh, Marshall Mathers album. Uh, you know, just a, that could have gone a lot of places. Honestly, if I did it, did this this again in in a month, it'd be probably be, be, be a different three three uh, three albums, maybe two. I think Special Ed's album might stay in that top three. So anyway, I'm low on the weather right now, so I'm feel like I'm storming worse a little bit there. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm talking a little fast, but again, guys. Um, this is the podcast. Thank you so much, as always. Uh, we will get back to normal, uh, normal schedule this week. Um, of course, Egypt is degenerate. Um, that will drop, I believe, tomorrow night, and then other other uh, episodes coming down the pike um, this week. So, talk to you guys later. God bless y'all, and see ya. <laughs>